All right, the next game that we're going to play is called Sh Slideshow, and it involves Alosha and Andrew, myself, Hannah, no, Tanner, Gibbs and Tanner, and Hannah. Yeah, so I was right, they were wrong. Anyway, what we're going to do is Alosha and Andrew are going to be our orators, and they're going to give us some facts about a made-up historical event, and then they're going to show us some pictures. And Andrew has to justify the pictures that to make them fit whatever Alosha said was going on during this time period. So what I need from you guys is a fake historical event. Anderson Cooper. The greatest history got through in 1804. Come on, again. The first was. Mohammed, what did you say? The history doctrine of 1804. The hipster the doctrine of 1804. All right, that works. The, his, the hipster doctrine of 1804. All right. Well, should we show them how the lights work? All right, so what's going to happen is we're going to have a spotlight showing, shining on our orators, like so. And then as they're orating, we're going to bring the house lights down. All right, and then our actors or our picture people are gonna make a crazy picture, and when we bring the lights up, Andrew is gonna have to explain it. That's basically how the game works. We're waiting for Andrew. Okay. Okay. Um, you got the hipster doctor, 1804. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> presentation on the Hipster Doctrine of 1804. 1804, that is a year, isn't it, Andrew? It is indeed. <laughs> now in 1804, hipsters were all over the world. You might not know about them, but they were doing the same things they do today. Wearing their stupid tight pants and their, having their dumb haircuts and their long hair and all that. Yep, those hipsters are truly despicable. Now the thing about the Hipster Doctrine of 1804 was that the hipsters went on a rampage through what is now New York City. There was blood everywhere and tight pants and bad haircuts. <laughs> this picture was taken by an expert geologist. He was on the scene. He has nothing to do with it. But here we go. This is our first picture. <laughs> here we see the hipster rampage, as my colleague was speaking of. Now, this man was a member of a band. An indie band. He made no money. He begged for money, but didn't get any. And here we see the poor man who is deprived of money, and this man who has great fashion. Look at him. He is a hipster man. This woman here represents all of the hipster oppressors, because they're so oppressed, right, colleague? So they're so impressed. Thank you. <laughs> now there was a hitch in the hipster doctrine of 1804 when people ran out of tight pants and scissors to give themselves their long haircuts. <laughs> Soon everyone was in chaos and turmoil, wouldn't you say? Turmoil and chaos. And chaos. Yes, this is an artistic interpretation by famous artist Leonardo de Thompson. <laughs> self-portrait. Here we see Leonardo de Thompson as he carries the weight of the hipster oppression upon his great mighty shoulders. <laughs> and here, the lower class normal people. <laughs> who worked in the oil rig industry. And it's an interactive photo. Yes, but I'm having all this madness and turmoil. Things finally came together, and the hipster doctrine was signed in 1804, when people finally found their tight 
Ants and the Titans and the Titans, right? And they all found this really great band that no one had ever heard of, and they just kind of huddled up and listened to that for a while. <laughs> now, this is a still image from a propaganda film entitled Hipsters and You. <laughs> Here we see Jesha. She was the indiest, hippest band of the time, but she was running away from the truth. She wasn't very good. And here we see the record executive looking onward to the right to show progress. Go away, Kesha. And here, well, I'm not exactly sure what that is. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. I hope you all learned a lot about the hipster doctrine of 1804.